students i am dr ashish vikhar and in today's video lecture we will learn about spur gear terminology this is a part of chapter number 4 of the subject theory of machines as per the prescribed syllabus of msbt mumbai so let us start to understand the important terms in the terminology of spur gear in last lecture we have seen the classification of the gears and why the gears are used so some part of that i am repeating here particularly in case of spur gear so spur gear is there in front of your screen a picture of spur gear is there there are two spur gears mounted on two parallel shaft first shaft is this one and second shaft is this one and these two parallel shafts on which the two spur gears are engaged with number of teeths so spur gear is the most used gear having straight teeth <coughs> and mounted on two or more parallel shafts the important feature of spur gear is the design of spur gear is very simple to understand the spur gear is also known as slow speed gears so this is a important thing spur gear is also known as slow speed gears why due to noisy operation at a high speed if such gears spur gears are moving or revolving at high speed it creates noise and it is having a noisy operation so that's why it is also known as slow speed gears spur gears feature what is that simple design of straight parallel teeth positioned around the circumference of a cylinder body with a center bore that fits over the shaft spur gears is very simple in design so simple design and the teeth are straight you will see that these teeth are straight parallel they are also parallel and positioned around the circumference of the cylinder body so circumference this is the circumference of a cylinder body and it is having a center bore so here you will see the center bore and that fits over the shaft and this is the shaft on which that bore is going to mount <coughs> spur gears are used in mechanical applications to increase or decrease the speed of a device or multiply torque by transmitting motion and power from one shaft to another through a series of mated gears so these are in short some of the applications given here where the spur gears are used why why spur gears are used spur gears are used to increase or decrease the speed of device or we can multiply the torque so we can have multiple multiplication in case of torque value by transmitting motion and power from one shaft to another through a series of mated gears so this is a fundamental application of spur gear let us see what are the types of spur gear there are three important types of spur gear first one is external spur gear as you can see this is a external spur gear second type is internal spur gear so this is here internal spur gear and third type is rack and pinion type of spur gear what is external spur gear these spur gears have external teeth as you can see these are the external teeth in case of this external spur gear on the outer surface of the cylinder so this is outer surface and on that outer surface these external teeth are mounted when the two gears meshes both will rotate in opposite direction as you have seen in the previous slide 
when the two gears meshes both will rotate in opposite direction as you can see here this is a gear number 1 and this is a gear number 2 they are in meshed position if this gear is moving in a clockwise direction then this gear will move in anti clockwise direction and in this way we are having two opposite motions so this is the feature of external spur gear the driver is usually smaller in size and driven is moved in opposite direction to the driver. So this is the important many times the driver is usually is having small size and driven gear is moved in opposite direction to the driver. Second type of spur gear is internal spur gear. In internal spur gear teeth are cut on the internal or inner surface as you can see this is an internal gear and teeth are cut on the internal or inner surface. This gear will be like a ring into that pinion or smaller gear meshes inside. So this is a smaller gear meshes inside it and the two shaft will rotate in the same direction. If this shaft, this shaft of internal gear of the in or the inside gear is moving in a clockwise direction then the outer gear this will move in a same direction. So this is the feature of internal spur gear. Third type of gear as you can see here rack and pinion type of gear. This combination of rack and pinion is used to convert rotary motion of the pinion. Rot this is a pinion this part is called as a pinion and this part is called as a rack both are having the teeth. So this combination of rack and pinion is used to convert the rotary motion of the pinion this rotary motion of the pinion into the translatory motion like this translatory motion of a rack or reverse to that translating motion of a rack this translating motion of the rack can be converted into rotary motion of the pinion. So these are the features or in short the details of three types of spur gears. What are the advantages of spur gears? Simplicity first advantage. So as I have mentioned spur gears are very simple in design or compact in design that makes them easy to design and install even in limited or restricted spaces. Second advantage is constant speed ratio. These gears increase or decrease the shaft speed with a high degree of precision at constant velocity. So constant speed drive it is the advantage. Reliability So spur gears are unlikely to slip there is no slip during operation and their durability decreases their risk of premature failure. Cost effectiveness, the simplicity of cost effectiveness, the, the simplicity of their design allows for greater manufacturing ability, making them less expensive to fabricate and purchase. Efficiency, spur gear systems have power transmission efficiencies between 95% and 99%. This is important parameter related to the spur gear. It is having an efficiency up to 95% to 99% and can transfer large amount of power across multiple gears with minimal power loss. So there is a minimal power loss. So these are some of the advantages of spur gear simplicity constant speed drive it is a constant speed drive it is having more reliability it is less costlier in manufacturing no expensive uh, expensiveness is there efficiency is also good very good efficiency and power across the multipliers uh, power transmission losses are very less so let us see what are the industrial applications of spur gears spur gears are used in conveyor systems in material handling as we have seen it is used to used as a speed redu reducer. <coughs> it is also used in engine and mechanical transportation system. It is used in handrail, gear pumps and motors are having spur gears, machining tools, marine engines, power plants, rolling mills, washing machines, fuel pumps. So these are major applications 
where we are having the use of spur gears. In spur gear terminology, in case of this terminology, terminology spur gear, spur gear terminology, we have to see these important terms. What is pitch cylinder, pitch circle, pitch diameter, pitch surface, pitch point, pitch circular pitch, module, gear ratio. After that, what is velocity ratio? Addendum circle, dedendum circle, <coughs> or dedendum clearance, full depth, backlash, and face. So these are the important terms in case of spur gear terminology in your examination there may be a question list the important terms in spur gear terminology in that category you can write the answer like this following are the important terms in spur gear terminology important in that is pitch circle this pitch circle is there after that what is circular pitch what is module what is gear ratio addendum circle dedendum circle clearance backlash face full depth these are important in that so let us see one by one what it means what this terminology says as you see here the picture showing the spur gear terminology as you are seeing here this is a teeth number one and this is a teeth number two these are the straight parallel teeth mounted on the circumference of a cylinder what we are seeing here at this center there is a pitch circle so this is a called as a pitch circle after that above to that there is another circle which is called as addendum circle or we can say here addendum addendum circle below to that as you can see here another circle which is plotted which is nothing but dedendum dedendum circle so let us see one by one starting with the pitch circle this is a pitch circle as you as you can see at the center this is a pitch circle it is a apparent circle that two gears can be taken like a smooth cylinders rolling without friction after that addendum circle second parameter is the outermost profile circle of the gear this is outermost profile circle of the gear so this is outermost profile circle of the gear addendum is a radial distance between the pitch circle and addendum circle so this is a addendum circle and this is a pitch circle between that this is addendum this is called as a addendum addendum so it is addendum is the radial distance between the pitch circle this is the pitch circle and the addendum circle. <coughs> dedendum circle, you will see that dedendum, dedendum circle at the lower is the innermost profile circle. So, this is the innermost as addendum circle is the outermost profile circle of the gear, but dedendum circle is the innermost profile of the circle. So, dedendum, what is that dedendum is the radial distance between the pitch circle and dedendum circle. So, this is the dedendum circle and this is a pitch circle and between that whatever the space is there that is called as dedendum dedendum so in this way we have defined here what is pitch circle addendum circle and dedendum circle after that let us see another details what is full depth you can see here this is a full depth this is a full depth is a sum of addendum and dedendum so, if we add this addendum and the dedendum, then we can have the whole depth or full depth. So, full depth is also called as whole depth, whole depth. <coughs> After that, let us see another parameter, diametral pitch P is the number of teeth per unit volume. It is defined as number of teeth per unit volume it is denoted by the symbol p and number of teeth divided by diameter of the pitch circle diameter this is a this is a pitch circle if we take if we measure the diameter then we can have 
we can define diametral pitch or p is nothing but number of teeth divided by diameter of the pitch circle presently we will see two teeth are there but the spur gear having number of teeth so you have to measure how many teeth are there and if we divide the value of diameter of the pitch circle then we can have diametral pitch face width as you can see here this is the face face width is the length of tooth length of tooth parallel to the axis so this is axis of the gear and this is parallel face width is parallel to it and it is length of the tooth how if you measure this length then we can have the face width module it is represented by symbol m and is the inverse of diametral pitch so 1 upon p if you take then you can give the we can have the value of small m and small m is nothing but called as a module so after that let us see what is flank and face as you can see here this is a face and this is a flank so flank is the surface of the tooth between the pitch circle between the pitch circle and the bottom and the bottom so here you can see this is nothing but flank this portion is nothing but flank face it is a surface of the teeth between the top land so this is a top land you can see this is a top land and a pitch circle and a face so upper part is face and lower part is called as a flank after that circular pitch is the space in a pitch circle used by each teeth so this is a circular pitch as you can see here circular pitch this is nothing but circular pitch clearance you can see small clearance here small clearance is the radial distance from top of the teeth from top of the teeth to the bottom of the tooth space in the mating gear backlash is the tangential space between the teeth of mating gears at the pitch circle and last one is gear ratio is number of teeth of larger gear to the smaller gear so we can define here gear ratio ratio as like a velocity ratio number of teeth on the larger gear to the smaller gear in this way we can have this term gear ratio thank you very much